Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I've got a 299 day old system that I plan on feeding today. It's a system in which we've got red wiggler worms. The system's right here behind me on the shelf and it's the system where the one thing that's been setting it apart from all my other systems is that in most of my systems I'm always feeding stuff that's been frozen but here almost from the very beginning we've been feeding nothing but non-frozen foods. And there's also a little novelty item in this particular system. It's a cork that's been going from system to system to system in my in, in my worm composting journey over the past maybe five or six years. So that's somewhere in there. I'm not even sure if we centrally located it last time. It might have gotten um, kind of lost in there, but maybe we'll bump into it. So let's get that system up on the bench, and we're going to get them fed. And I think we're going to do a little twist too. Well, let's get started. So by twist, I really just meant altering the way we're going to go about today's check-in rather than just going in here and giving them their next 25th feeding as, as business as usual, which is typically feeding down the center. My idea was to take them now on day 299 from foraging, kind of soft transitioning them into what I would almost consider a, a partial migration already. Um, or some people might consider this as sort of a wedge, but to me a wedge is a, a it's more of a way to operate a bin perpetually versus when I set it up for a finite period of time where the end game is, you know, harvesting castings and relocating gathered worms. I think of it less as a, a wedge and more as a horizontal migration. So my idea was to um, administer today's feeding, which, like... All the other ones before, except for the first few, are going to be non-frozen foods. And I guess before we get really messed up here, and well, my hands are still sort of clean, I'll show you what we got here. Mo mostly the cores of peppers, um, a whole lot of them here, not frozen, and some some peels off of some cucumber, as well as a day of uh, cough, uh, day's worth of coffee right there. So that's going to become their now horizontal feeding. And I figured, you know, let's just pick this side of the bin arbitrarily, no real reason for that. But I also thought that perhaps if we were to start there by excavating the space where the where the feeding zone is going to get set up, then we'll, we'll already have a little bit of space into which we can maybe put some leftover bedding that might have been um, lingering from the last check-in. And just put it into the uh, into the edge of the bin where we're going to be attempting to steer the worm towards the worms towards. Um, so we'll make a little space in here, and then we'll begin excavating the feeding zone to see how they've done over the past 15 days since the last feeding. I think we've got ourselves a nice little uh, nice little space into which we can set up today's horizontal migration feeding zone. But we still need a little bit more space into which we can pile even more material, possibly, unless all of it, as is, gets moved over to the other edge. And, you know, I kind of expected to see perhaps a little bit more leftover bedding materials, a lot more kind of shredded paper and newspaper and cardboard bits and stuff, but so far I'm not really seeing any. <laughs> wow. So I guess besides doing away with the nice feeding they got last time, they've clearly also done away with all of the bedding they were given too. Wow. And there is a lot of worms hanging out down here, that's for sure. Well, I guess that means these worms are on the lookout for some nice carbon-rich materials. So it's a good thing that I've got all this newspaper here. i got a whole bunch of strips of newspaper here that I thought I would kind of crumble up loosely and build out the feeding area. And I've got a replacement top covering newspaper even. So the old newspaper that was the top covering on here that you guys saw a moment ago can... Uh, The old one can be reused as supplementary bedding down in the feeding zone. So what I set aside over there is what I believe to be the cork. 
and I didn't want to abuse it too much. Perhaps since I've got my squirt bottle here and we're going to be setting up a feeding zone, maybe we can give this thing a little rinse and take a closer look at how it how it's making progress. To me, it seems like in this bin, it's it's made some really nice progress over time. So, how is this horizontal migration feeding zone going to look? Well, it's just going to be bedding. And besides those strips, I've also got shredded stuff here too. But I think the topper that really shows we mean what we're doing here is that we're <laughs> using a little divider. So, uh, that's kind of what I like to use. So, let's, why don't we, uh, yeah, okay. I'm trying to think of how to kind of create enough of a little bit of a backfill over here so that this piece of cardboard can sort of stand on its own and then in can come some of this stuff so perhaps just bringing this in right here this will give us the best sort of backing support so that we can lay down a nice foundation for the horizontal migration feeding zone Right. I'm not sure if that's enough, but maybe we could just give it a little bit of material, like so. And now it's sort of standing up so we can get a sense of where it's going to be and how it's going to look. So, I think, I think I'm going to maybe even use a little bit of my seasoned shredded paper cardboard mix over here. And I guess the whole idea behind having the stuff compartmentalized like this is that this stuff is very nice, you know? Here and there you might see a little scrap of something, but for the most part, this seems to me like finished castings, you know? So if we can convince the worms to, hey, head on out, go elsewhere, and we've just got ourselves some castings that could be scooped out of there. And, and that's it, have a nice day. So here's the uh, portion for today. Perhaps we can go at this a little bit slowly. We'll put, put all this vegetable matter aside and we'll start out with a nice little, um, bottom coating here and we'll even hang on to this to be our feeding zone indicator following tradition and sort of like worm chow but not worm chow is just some pulverized peanut shell that I've been trying to do away with and I've got a whole bunch more peanut shells that I can grind up this way but I've been trying to work that stuff down and out of my inventory so, uh, the one thing I've not added yet, which I really wanted to, was a little bit more moisture. So perhaps before we get much further along, this would be a good time to just come on in here with a spray bottle and start dampening some of this stuff here. And I think at the end we're going to cover up over here on the feeding zone side with plastic pretty thoroughly. Um, Maybe leaving some of the other side of the bin exposed to just the air to let it start drying out. Maybe becoming a little bit less hospitable for the worms to want to remain in. So let's uh, try to build up a nice little platform here onto which we can perhaps now come in with this nice delicious portion of non-frozen vegetable matter. Oh yeah, I forgot there's some uh, little bits of tomato in here too. <laughs> so... Not much, hardly worth mentioning, but there was some of that here as well. And we'll see, we'll see what kind of a turnout we get. But I mean, just looking at the way they did away with the last feeding, they really did a nice job. They just totally demolished what they got last time. That includes the bedding too, which was pretty neat to see. I figured really quick while the squirt bottle's already sort of in service over here, perhaps we can get a closer look at how this cork is coming along. Definitely um, seen better days. <laughs> it's so weird because like if you look down the end of it, it almost seems like half of it's been lost already. Just like scraped off this side where this side still seems to have its original outer shape, the arc. It's um, kind of like a half of a circular, uh, tubular, cylindrical, whatever um, shape here. And is that a worm? Yeah. Little guy is just right on there. Maybe it's a centipede. I don't know. Maybe it's even just a texture of the 
texture of the wood maybe um so i figured put it right there you know let's try to keep it right where it's going to be in the middle of the action and then we could uh even start coming in with even more bedding you know what? let's hang on to what remains here so i can still just do away with these last couple chunks of paper and then perhaps come in with a little bit more moisture and then we'll we'll top it off with the remainder of that shredded paper cardboard mix there okay. yeah, things look pretty nice over here that's all the newspaper I had still got the shredded stuff to dump in here let's stand this back up as well so that is our horizontal migration feeding zone definitely going to be protected from excessive moisture loss due to evaporation by being covered with plastic out here this stuff I mean I've got a new paper top covering which will limit the amount of moisture that leaves the system it won't be an ab abrupt drying of the material so it won't shock or harm any worms but it will gradually start becoming less uh less comfortable for the worms to remain in as it gets drier and drier and hopefully that'll result in worms making their way over to where we're going to be feeding from now on so let's see if we can just leave some more of this material in the worm bin rather than getting flushed down the sink and then we can get this thing covered back up so the uh the replacement paper that i have is this right here but it does almost seem like if we were to fold back this section here we'll have about half of the container sort of double covered a little bit better protected over here near the feeding zone and furthest away from the feeding zone fairly uh fairly exposed with just that one sheet of just that one sheet of newspaper out there so i think this will be our feeding zone how does that look or is it better to limit its size even more fold it back to here yeah i like the look of that let's try that <laughs> so that's it officially day 299 transitioning these little guys from just everyday composting to uh still you know still doing the same thing composting down my kitchen scraps and paper waste but at this point also doing so in a way that serves my purposes of them evacuating their finished castings and gathering in a place where they could be pulled out and easily relocated so that's it for the video everyone hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now